What's up, everybody? We are going to be getting going just in a few moments, about four or five minutes, just as soon as the, uh, what do you call it, the Discover Crypto crew wraps up their stream. We're going to be kicking off, but I want to see everybody getting involved right now. We got a new emoji. Let's see that Mr. Machacho. We got the Mr. Machacho emoji with the sombrero and the mustache. Let me see if you can find it. If you are a member, I cannot wait to break down the charts. We're going to be looking through a lot of these different coins that we have on the screen on this thumbnail. <clears throat> Hope you're all feeling well. Hope you're all looking good. I know you are. I'm in a trade right now with H bar. I'm maybe closing it. All I'm doing is moving my stop loss up. If the price does reverse, it will just be closed. So uh, what are you trading right now? Are you in any trades? Are you just stacking into your long-term portfolio? Let me know what you're doing. Getting going here in just a few minutes. Shout out to Brandon Buttry, member here at BitLab Academy, says, let's give a round of applause for all the ADA holders out there, all you Cardano holders, shout out, have you guys been holding? And now you see, you feel like it's not moving, and then it starts ripping. We're going to be talking about that, that today, capital flow, rotation of capital in the markets, not jumping to, between different coins, finding the setups. If you miss one, you can look to another. It's okay. Let's be patient. Let's let the market do the work for us. Let's just let our strategy lead us to the promised land, baby. Shout out to all the Mr. Machachos out there. Let's see some emojis. Let's get this going. New time, 11.45 a.m. every day-ish. It's basically going to be right about when the Discover Crypto show ends. We'll be going live directly. So shout out to everybody that's here. Big love to each and every one of you. want to make sure you can all hear me you can hear the music make sure the stream is actually going live throw a bunch of the bull emojis in there or the boom emojis if you can hear me i just want to make sure we don't have the issue like we did the other day Shout out to everybody that's here in the waiting room. We are going to be getting going here in a moment. We just like here at the Hit Network not to step on each other's toes. So let's keep this chat flowing. How you feeling? Are you in any trades? I'm in an H bar trade right now. Uh, got in, uh, I don't know, about an hour ago. Uh, it's looking, it's got a little bit of a rounding top. It's looking like it may try to make its way down, but I'm not going to close the trade. I just moved my stop loss up into profit. Are you in any trades? Did you take a trade? Have you lost a trade? Won a trade? Have you joined Blowfin? The description is uh, the, the link is down in the description. Join us there. We're going to be having a great giveaway to all of you that are trading with us through that link. 
is going to be a multi-hundred dollar giveaway for people that uh, share their trade. Uh, you can share the little trade blurb showing your P&L on different trades. And the person that has the best P&L each week that, sh- that tags, uh, I can't tell it all. We're going to release this on Monday. But there's going to be uh, some giveaways. Trade with us there. Hope you're all feeling good. Uh, we're going to be getting going here in just a moment. The cl- countdown says 50 seconds, but I may have to drop that back a little bit which I'm going to right now because we're going right after Discover Crypto every day. Shout out to the new time. We will be doing members streams in the morning throughout the week for all you BitLab members here on YouTube and in the Discord. Uh, Those are going to be happening around 10 a.m. regularly. And I'm going to be doing some uh, weekend uh, trading streams as well. Hope you're all feeling good. Hit the like button while we're waiting. Big love to each and every one of you. Let's get this going. Shout out to anybody that's waiting. Uh, meet some people here in the chat. Let's make this a community. all these emojis with the members. I think my favorite thing about the memberships is seeing you guys do the different emojis with the the new one that we just launched yesterday, the Mr. Machacho with the sombrero. And uh, the chicken, is, I think, is my favorite because it's so stupid. And the Mr. Burns. What's your favorite emojis on here? Let me know. How you feeling? Again, we're going to be getting going here in just a moment. Shout out Theo Rodriguez. He said, Roswell, New Mexico in the house. How many, where are you all from? What city, what state? Remember, even if you said this before, we always got new people. So let's see if anybody's in the same areas. We can also do meetups, have the BitLab community meeting up in different places, sharing thoughts, sharing charts, tying together this community. Shout out to everybody here. We're going to be getting going here as soon as Discover Crypto ends. Looks like they're wrapping up. We're getting going here in just a second. Everybody hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell. Let's de- let's break down these charts and see what's going on. Let's see if there's any trades to take. Let's talk about this capital flow that's going on in the market right now. Let's get this going. Let's I'm ready for it.
Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are at. Welcome to the BitLab Academy daily stream. Yes, we are going live every day directly after Discover Crypto now uh, from now on. We're still going to be doing member streams. Those For those of you that join the membership here at BitLab Academy on YouTube, or if you're a BitLab member in the Academy at bitlabacademy.com, uh, you'll have access to it as well. We're doing those member streams throughout the week, different days, uh, also on the weekend. So Join in the membership here. We're going to be talking all everything, tools, resources, uh, you know, breaking down charts, TA, breaking all the things down so you have all the tools that you need to dominate in this market. Now, I want to welcome anybody that's new here. Shout out. How y'all doing? How you feeling? Let's talk about what's going on right now. I am in the middle of an HBAR trade. I entered the trade a little bit back. Let me double click on this. I entered the trade over, golly, where is it at? I'm on the one minute chart, uh, looking for the, here we go. I entered the trade right here and uh, rode this down a little bit and price action still pushing up. Uh, as it pushed up, I've moved my stop loss up with it as it has gone. So it doesn't matter to me, does not matter to me what trade, what the trade does. Doesn't matter to me what the price action does. It can go up, it can go down. I will, I'm already in profit. So even if it reversed right now, I'd be closed out in profit. I'm currently up 10%. About two hundred fifty-eight dollars uh, nominal sort of price that I, you know I'm trading with a smaller portfolio, so it could be relatable to everybody and understanding how you can navigate this space. Now I'm using Blowfin, so make sure you sign up with that link down below. We got a great giveaways that are going to be happening for those of you that sign up with that link and you share your P and Ls. You come right here on this on this uh, page right here and you click right here and you can uh, copy this link or or download this image and share it. Uh, we're going to be telling you how to do that next week. There's going to be some really great stuff, so definitely sign up down below. And you see, if the price action is pulling back like it was and you get scared, you just try to exit because you don't. it's going to go down. Well, then you tend to miss out on things. So you can come down, you essentially just set your stop loss, and you can just click on this and move your stop loss along the way as price pushes up. And if it continues, you can continue making money on the way up. Now, you can also set up a trailing stop loss down here Uh it, down here uh, in, in the deal, I'm doing a whole training video on this to show you guys how to really uh, basically engage with this exchange to make it work for you the best. There's all kind of different, all kinds of different coins on here that you can go through and trade. But what are we talking about today? We're talking about all kinds of things today. So shout out to everybody that's here. If you don't know who I am, welcome to the show. My name's Kelly Kellum, the director of BitLab Academy. We have an entire online education platform at bitlabacademy.com. We break down everything from candles, charts, chart patterns, on-chain data analysis, trading strategies, psychology of trade. We, it's all there. And we also have an incredible, incredible community on, on Discord that's part of the BitLab Academy membership with, I mean, you don't even understand. There's so much good content in there. In fact, John Dalton, one of the pro traders on our team, uh, he shares so many great charts, trade setups. He even did a little $1,000 to $10,000 uh, trading competition here in the Discord, but he breaks down exactly the trades he's looking at where the entry he, he's uh, looking at stop loss zones and the percentage, uh, basically your, your uh, profit profitable ratios so you can make sure that you're in the know of what other traders are looking at that have been doing this for a long time. So get involved with our Discord. Uh, we have a free section, but also the premium section, which you can find at bitlabacademy.com when you enroll. Now, what are we talking about today? We're talking about some price action in the charts. Let me come, come out of here. We see Cardano absolutely ripping everybody. Everybody that's been waiting on this coin to move, well, it's moving. And you only can take... You can only take advantage of this price action if you are patient. There's a lot of people that sometimes I remember last cycle, they're like, Cardano, oh, Cardano is such a stable coin. Same thing happened with Chainlink. It's such a stable coin because it's not moving while everything else is ripping. That sucks, right? No, it doesn't suck. It means capital's flowing somewhere else. And we need to be aware that capital rotates through this space, through this ecosystem, in and out of different parts of the market, in and out of different coins. It does not pay you. It does not pay you to be impatient in this market. If you want to succeed in this market, you need to identify what assets that you do want to invest in, which assets you want to trade, what percentage allocation of your different portfolios, long-term hold and trading portfolio, you are allotting to investing and to trading because there's different 
strategies you're use, utilizing for both. And in addition to that, if you're holding an asset and you see three other assets move, you don't jump out of that asset to, to go catch that, that moving train. No, all you're doing in that situation is donating your money to the game. If something else is moving, you say, okay, this is moving. What may move next? And you get yourself in position using the strategies you learn here at BitLab Academy to make sure that you are in position and you can do, do it in a healthy way so you can be profitable consistently. If you haven't yet, make sure you check out bitlabacademy.com because that's where we break it all down. Now, jumping back in here, look at this. We have on the BitLab trading stack, we can see the volume, both the buy, the selling volume and the buying volume. Now, if we double click on the BitLab volume here and scroll down to show volume data, right now it's up and down. You can also see the delta, which, which one was the dominant force. So a lot of predominantly buying pressure was really pushing this up. And this is evident also in the candles here. They're teal. These teal candles suggest a lot of buying power, a lot of buying pressure underneath. In addition, here on the BitLab Trend Fuel, all of these part of the BitLab trading stack, we see these green bars instead of white. That means there's a lot of underlying buying pressure on this time frame, on these candles. Now, if we come down, actually, if we go, go up to like the daily, we can see, look at this. I mean, just ripping to the upside and we're seeing volume is agreeing with it. It's not pushing up with low volume, which would indicate a very strong likelihood uh, of basically a false move, a bull trap that has been brewing there. Okay. We have to take consideration of what the data is saying, not just what the candle says with the price moving up or down. It doesn't freaking matter. The price does not matter when you're looking at an asset. The price does not matter when you're trading. The price is only a data point in conjunction with many other data points. So if you're seeing price move up, that's not your signal. You look at the candle structure in conjunction with the other data points you're looking at on screen. Now, whether or not you have the BitLab trading stack, you can come over here uh, to, you know, to MACD, RSI, Stochastics, Moneyflow. You can have all these up, and you can have the VPVR, and you can see right here, similarly, the MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence, that's what MACD stands for, is expanding to the upside. But we also see the Stochastics are relatively high. But what have we noticed through this entire move? All the way from here, all the way over to where we're at now. For 47 days, the stochastics have remained relatively high. So it doesn't mean that just when stochastics go high, you exit a trade. It means this also could say, hey, man, things are pretty strong right now. So you're looking to other data points on the chart. So coming out of here, I want to ask everybody right now, how many of you are riding the Cardano train? How many of you bought low? What was your lowest entry? Ever, it's going to be all over the place. Some of your lowest entry is going to be up in the $2. And if you've held all the way to now, bravo. If you held from a $2 entry and you didn't do any buying at near the lows or any buying below that price point, what are you doing? If you believe in an asset and you see prices drop, that gives you an opportunity to buy at a lower price, which effectively lowers your average entry. If you buy at $2, the price drops to $1 and you buy then you're lowering your average entry down to the, depending on how much you buy, down to the dollar fifties, dollar dollar twenty five. Meaning the price doesn't need to go f as far to get you back to break even. If you just buy high and you hold it all the way to the bottom, I mean, I, I commend you for not capitulating. But if you're willing to hold through that that bearishness, why not also add to a position of an asset that you believe in when you do see market prices fall so low? Lower your average entry now. How many of you are riding that Cardano trade? I, look at that. I see a 0.3, uh, so 30 cents. I see $2.11 a few years ago and 25 cents a few months ago. Mr. Mark, shout out to you. Big love to you, man. You know what I'm going to do? We got a lot of new people in here. If you are new to this stream, raise your hand. Let me know. If, we, if I see 10 or more hands because you're new, I will gift uh, I'll gift another 10 memberships to the channel here. So raise your hand. Throw a, uh, throw a raise hand emoji. And uh, if you're new here, and I will, uh, I'll be gifting out some memberships. Now, let's dive back into the chart. There's some things I want to talk about today. Coming back over here uh, on this uh, thumbnail, we have a lot of things that I listed here. And if we can really just look at CoinGecko. And what I did was I came over here to CoinGecko. And then here, oh, we see a bunch of hands. All right, we got Mr. Mark, AVTV, Atropine. You're not new here, Atropine. I see you here regularly, but we'll still gift, uh, we'll still count that hand. Rahan. Gen Gen God. I really just want an excuse to give, give away stuff to you guys. So 
Uh, I see a bunch of hands. You know what? Let's come over here. Let's. Uh, I got to go off stream so you can't see my, my credit card info. Let's open this up. Let's gift away 10 memberships to each. Uh, to, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't know who it's going to be, but let's do 10 memberships. Boom. Gifting. I love it. I'm all about uh, giving back. That's what this is about. That's what this entire stream is about is breaking down the experience that I've gained over the last you know 12 years or so of trading. And also, I mean, since 26, 2015, 2016 in crypto and really just giving back to the community so you guys don't make the same stupid mistakes I make back in the day. You know, with the first time I was trading spot and I was killing it. That's what I had been doing before in traditional assets as well. And then I was like, you know what? If I'm doing this well on spot, I might as well go on leverage. I'm going to be rich next week. You know what happened? Next week I was broke because I lost $70,000 in, in about one, uh, two trades in about 10 minutes. I talked about it a lot even back when I was on the Crypto Jeb Show. I'm very transparent about that because I don't want you guys to fall into the same pit holes that I did. Now, let me shout out the new members in the house. We got Fallen Down Defense. Shout out. Welcome to the community. Uh, Ernest Lee, shout out. Robbie Sh uh, Shooten. Who else we got in here? JT. Uh, I can't even read that. Bruce Reed, 99. Avan. Piccolo Rick. Uh, Juan Idaraga. Idar Idaraga. <laughs> Something like that. But shout out to everybody here. Shout out to all the members. If you are a member, Drop in your favorite emoji right now. Let's show what emojis are available. I just think they're so fun. But I want to get back here to the chart. So I want to talk about what's going on here. If you haven't yet, give me a follow. I'm right here at Kelly Kellum, K-E-L-L-Y, K-E-L-L-A-M. And then, of course, make sure you're following BitLab Academy at Academy BitLab. And again, remember, I'm going to be going live every day at 1145-ish AM right when Discover Crypto ends. So shout out there. Now, there's a couple of things I want to break down here. Now, Willie Wu. If you don't know who Willie Wu is, you got to go follow him. It's at WooNomic. You can put my mouse over here. You can see at WooNomic. Now, he's, he outlined some really impressive things here. The bull case for Bitcoin. Rates dropping. This is coming. It is right around the corner. Global liquidity returning. We've talked about this at length here on this channel and how important this is to the price action. This is the fuel for which price can go up. If there's more capital being deployed it globally, that capital works its way into markets. And Bitcoin, which is the best asset in the history of the world, is also at a point where the market generally starts to rise into that supply-demand shock that happens around the Bitcoin halving. So when you see that time frame and where we're at in the market cycle in relationship to the halving, in addition to the global liquidity coming back in, we see this right here. Look at this running up right when price action starts exploding higher. These things are tied. So coming back over to what Woonomic said, uh, global liquidity returning. Dixie, the dollar, uh, the strength of the dollar, peaking. You don't want a very strong dollar and a rising dollar, the value of that dollar, compared to other a basket of other global currencies. You don't want the dollar going up if you want Bitcoin to go up because the strength of the dollar, if it goes up, that means that there's pressure on risk markets. So the fact that the Dixie may be peaking and may start retracing coming down suggests that money is flowing out of the strength of the dollar and that, that alleviates pressure on risk assets and allows capital to flow into those markets. This is the things we want to see. This is the circumstances we want to watch when we want Bitcoin to go up. Impressive public company treasury demand for Bitcoin indicated by uh, MSTR, which is MicroStrategy, buying appetite. These guys are being a signal to the market. Why? Because they were, they were buying all along the way, near highs, near mids, near lows, because they have a long-term strategy. And they were eating crow, some people think, for quite a while because they were down quite significantly, so much so that people were thinking they were going to get margin called and be completely wrecked. And now what? They're up over a billion dollars. Things flip pretty quickly. Not only are they up over a billion dollars, they also, uh, they're also signaling to other institutions, and Michael Saylor is doing a great job of being, Michael Saylor is doing a great job of being a voice to the business world 
about this is not just an asset that kids in basements are trading. This is a store of value. This is a long-term play. This is an essentially an absolute scarce resource that should be on your balance sheet because you can utilize this to not only expand uh, expand your value into the future, but it also firmly places your firmly places your business in to transitioning into the new world because we are absolutely doing that with digital assets so we got to be aware of that oh shout out we got a super chat uh, i think it says dollar 55 let me go to who the, who that was uh elo brown shout out to the uh to the super chat i appreciate you you're here all the time and by the way i want to shout you out because i saw your post a couple weeks ago a week or two ago yeah uh, you just like everybody in this market has moments where you're struggling, has moments where you see other people winning and other people, and you feel like every time you take a trade, it goes opposite direction. We can't let that get us down. It will. We're humans. We have to take that as information, a lesson. Okay, if this is happening, what am I doing that is bringing this? We have to take it on the chin, let our egos go and say, okay, I do have control of this. How can I adjust 1% each day of my strategy so that I can be in command? I can be in charge of my future. If we are victims, which I'm a victim regularly if, of my mind, if we stay a victim of our mind, we cannot step into our future. We're going to be held by our past. So shout out to you, Elo Brown. I appreciate the transparency and the, the vulnerability of you sharing that because everybody needs to recognize that we all go through those times where nothing we do, nothing we do works. And that's what BitLabs Academy is all about, helping provide those tools. So let's jump back in here. What else we got? Peter Schiff noting gold at all, uh, noting gold at all time high, but not Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, this is just funny. I actually tagged him in a post yesterday that talked about Bitcoin being better than gold. I was just hoping he'd see it. Uh, Senator Warren, our favorite friend in Congress, yeah, right, suggesting to North Korea to buy Bitcoin to improve national security. It's just pretty funny. All the above long term. Now, the bear case for Bitcoin bears technicals developing. Spot flows coming back into exchanges. CME gap at 39. There's a CME gap about 39.4, 39, 39.5, 39.6. We got to pay attention to that. And for me, I'm not worried about that gap. I say that gap provides me an opportunity. It provides me a marker on the chart that if price does fall, I can look to that level. And if it drops below that level and I bought there, I don't have my feelings hurt. Oh, I bought and it's dropping. No, I know where we're at in the market cycle. You know where we're at in the market cycle. You watch this channel. You watch Discover Crypto. You watch plenty of other people. Tom Crown, Crypto Face. You're all, all of you out here. Let me see in the chat right now, what are three other crypto channels that you watch. I'm sure a lot of you watch the same ones and there's a lot of different people with a lot of different perspectives. That's healthy, but you're, you're diving in. You understand this, but looking at the having cycle, we've talked about this. We know where we're at. We're coming into this point right here, which is essentially the chop zone leading to this right here. These gains, this is a lot of consolidation, but then massive gains, consolidation, then massive gains. We're coming into this period again right now, and we're going to start a new one of these threads and see how that overlays with previous cycles. We understand what's happening. So the, the gap at 39,000 doesn't bother me. I say that's an opportunity. If it drops below that, we already know. The thirty-two dollars to $33,000 level, the previous range high, we know it. Now, looking at this, everybody's looking at these altcoins ripping, and this is the total two. This is everything in the crypto market other than Bitcoin. Okay? And we can see, look at this. Quite a bit of chop here down at the end of 2022 into 2023. This was that area where the market started ripping, boom, up. Head and shoulders here, but it didn't break down. That's ultimately the fact that this was invalidated is quite bullish. Now we pushed up previous range high here, and we've broken out of that. Does that mean it's all systems go? We go up, up, and away? No. It means that the structure is suggesting that the market is warming up its engines. This is warming up its engines. It's more likely than not at some point, whether we go you know, uh, 20, 30, $50 billion higher on the total two, at some point I do think we will come back and get a retest of this. Which means even right now, if you feel like you completely missed the market and you missed the lows, forget that. Let go of what you didn't do or what you did wrong. S screw all that nonsense. Look to what, can I do now? And if we understand looking at these market cycles, 
that coming into the having, we tend to have some sort of reset and think about how much pressure is on the market right now with certain characteristics like when the spot ETFs are going to get approved or delayed or denied. What's going on with even even further mud that that Gary Gensler wants to throw at the wall, just spouting nonsense about uh, securities and this and that, just basically trying to cripple the market. We don't know what can come, but at some point, it could even be just be uh, market makers and smart money dumping the price before the, the spot ETFs. So we need to be vigilant in that at normal movements in markets is price moves up, rise, retrace, continuation. So we want to see this, see this rise, retrace, continuation. We want to figure out where that retrace is coming to. Maybe it doesn't come to this level. Maybe if this continues moving up, it comes to somewhere in this level here. But we have to be vigilant. We have to be adaptable every day with our analysis and say, just because I made this analysis yesterday doesn't mean I have to hold to it today if the conditions are different. Note that. This is a total two, one day. Now, this is a total three. This is all altcoins taking out Ethereum as well. So it's, it's the market minus Bitcoin and Ethereum. And look at this. We had a beautiful sort of rise here. And we had a bit of a, we call it a bull flag. We call it, It's not quite a bull pennant. Uh, it kind of is a bull pennant, but with a deviation down below. Look at this. Trapping people to go back short. This is a bear trap. Comes back into this, finds resistance at this previous high. All these previous highs, all this chopping here. And then release was this rise, retrace, continuation. But there is some things to be concerned about just because this is setting up to be ultimately very, very bullish. I want you all to note that we do have some other things. Cardano pushing up, okay, making some huge headway. But the chart I really meant to show is this one right here. This is the total three. And look at this. It's setting up for a breakdown. Oh, my God. But is this setting up for a breakdown? You got to look at every chart with all the data on it because what this is suggesting actually is in support of these other bullish characteristics that we've been looking at. This chart that we're looking at, this is inverted. And if this was a distribution top, meaning price goes up, consolidates, and then distributes down, taking advantage of all basically hype cycle buyers, chopping around, getting people convinced it's going to go down, getting people convinced it's going to go up, taking advantage of free liquidity because people are donating it to the game because they don't have a strategy. They're trading on their emotions. So what this shows is once this comes down to this level, then we have that. And what is this? Remember, this is inverted. How do we know that? We can look at the prices over here. Okay. We can see the prices going up to the downside. And so where are we at right now? Somewhere right about in here. But this, again, doesn't mean all system go. It means the engine is warmed up. You've kicked the tires. You got the key in the ignition. Or you got your finger on the button uh, of your car to start it. Or it's already started. But you know what I'm saying. It's warmed up. But you got to watch for the chop, especially in this region that we know is leading up to the most important part of the market cycle, which is having post having. So what are you doing right now? That's my question. That's uh, some of the boom, boom, boom. So we want to look at here, coming back over here to CoinGecko, and what, what I did before we came on stream, and I do it every morning, as I come over here, I look at this, I hit the 24-hour marker, it tells me the biggest gainers, and then I hit it again, it tells me the biggest losers, because both these can give us information. So biggest gainers, we got BitTorrent, Bonk, Optimism, Cardano, Solana, Injective, Clayton. Biggest losers, this may present opportunity for longs, 40, which is ordinals, Helium, h &T, Beam, Celestia, Quant, Quant, finally broke that 100 mark, went all the way up to 110, 111, and coming back down to 109. Is it setting up for a potential next move? Let's go ahead and check, see if I got closed out. Yeah, I got closed out. Okay, I got closed out of that position. The market moved down when I wasn't paying attention, and that's okay. I had a stop loss. That's why you set stop losses. So I moved it up as price went up. And uh, as the price came down, it came down and closed me out. And that's okay because it's going to be in profit. So let's uh, head back over to, so let's look at some of these coins. Let's look at some of these coins. Let's look at the, the losers first. And these are just losers in 24 hours. I mean, look, Ordinals is up 127% in the last seven days. Of course, it's going to have a little bit of a pullback. But what did we talk about a second ago when we were talking about healthy bullish price movement? When we were talking about healthy bullish price movement, we were talking about this important factor right here, rise, retrace, continuation. 
So if we're looking in a bull trend where things are moving generally to the upside, and we understand that, and we understand that what we want to do in bullish markets is buy, you know, basically buy, sell the rip, buy the dip, sell the rip, buy the dip. This is for your trading portfolio, not 100% of your long-term portfolio, okay? So if we're going to that uh, coin gecko and seeing the coins that have pulled back a little bit, and we can see on this chart, not only all this data, we see this has been ripping, we're getting a little bit of a pullback, we can see that you know there's a little bit of chop in here, but we're gonna see it when we pull it on the, on the charts. This is telling us, we know things are ripping, so let's look for what things are dipping so we can take advantage of the market. I'm not here. My question to you is, are you here to be taken advantage of by the market? Or are you here to take advantage of an edge that you've created through technical analysis, through maybe on-chain data, but looking at the price action, whatever edge that you're utilizing to navigate this market, are you here to take advantage and extract capital out of the market? Or are you here to donate capital to other people with better strategies? Ask yourself that every time you take a trade. That should help reinstill that you ask yourself, what's my goal with my trade? What's my risk management on this trade? What's my target on this trade? And how, especially, this is a double up on risk management, what's my stop loss? What's my exit strategy, both to get out because it's going down, but also to take profit if it's going up. Make sure you're doing that. My computer screen did that on its own. I don't even know how it did that, but all right. Now, that's quite funny. I don't know how, <laughs> I guess it's my, <laughs> that, that, that's just making me laugh. Uh, but I got a question for everybody that's watching right now. Every single one of you, look down below this video. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Join us here. We're here live every day. We've been doing this, this stream specifically for about seven months or so. We're all already pushing up close to 10,000. I'd love to see you in the community. We're going to continue on, do a bunch of TA on these coins. But hit the like button. Let's drive that up. We got about 70 likes and almost 200 people in here. Did your mother raise your right? Hit that like button. Now, let's get back into the charts. Now, we're going to look at these because maybe this is providing an opportunity. Maybe it's not. The chart will tell us. I don't need to force an opportunity. And maybe this is providing an opportunity to take some profits. You see what we're doing here? We're using the market's natural movements and our understanding of price action on a chart to identify where there's opportunity to take advantage of in this market. I just want to see if this is, I want to look for another opportunity on HBAR since I was in a trade here. So look right here, option J or alt J if you're on a PC, we have this previous high, look where price came down to, to previous highs. So if this loses, maybe this is going to move a little bit further down. And look at this structure right here. Boom. This structure right here told us it was going to go down. Why? Shoulder, head, shoulder, a bit. And even if it's not a head and shoulders, we see a rounding, rounding structure, which suggests the bullish momentum is starting to wane and the bears are waking up from hibernation on this time frame. This is a one minute chart suggesting that this might be coming down. And that's exactly what it did. The chart will tell you 99% of the time what is in store in the near future. So let's go ahead, come out of here, delete these lines. Let's look at what we got. Now, how many, uh, how many of you out there have ordinals, whether you actually have ordinals or you're trading the coin? Man, <laughs> hit the likes for Killer Kelly, the CMG's 510. Um, let's get a little bit of a roll call here. Now we got 170 people in the room. Where are you tuned in from? What city, what state, what country? And what was the last thing you bought? What was the last thing you sold? And I want to see some emojis flying in here as well. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Mr. Mark dropping a, a thumbs down. Well, thumbs down. Uh, to you as well, my friend. <laughs> I'm just joking. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're all having a good day. This place is a is a place of positivity, positivity, empowerment, tools, resources, and community. So get involved. Um, so let's get out here to the six hour. Look at this beautiful bull flag that's been forming here for uh, a little bit of time. Got a little bit of a bull flag here coming right into this order block. Where is this from? All the way back here. All the way back here, April. Uh, 2022. Wow, that's a pretty long time for this order block uh, giving us some signal over here. And look at this, not even doing TA on the charts, just using the BitLab trading stack. It pointed this out, area to watch. Look, came right into it, sold off, came back into it, formed a new order block. 
sold off a little bit again, but we're holding up here above the trend signal line. And this is what I like to see uh, down here at the bottom. Let me go ahead and move this. Down here at the bottom, we have the stochastics have come down and reset while the money flow is positive. Yes, we got two triangles here basically showing that the momentum is clipped and is rolling over. But we have the stochastics indicating maybe we got the maybe this maybe we got a little bit of the pullback that we are going to get, and we are remaining in this bullish structure because the stochastics are reset. But let's get better resolution. Let's get down to the one hour, and we are going to jump into those altcoins here in a moment. But I like to set the tone with Big Daddy Bitcoin so we can make sure we understand what the narrative of the risk in the market is of the day. Now, this is something very bullish. Looking here at the one hour, we have a bit of a, tr a trend line right here. We have broken out of this uh, if we were considering this a trend line. We've broken out of this, but we're still holding stagnant right in this region, kind of right at this point of control, which is the most, the most amount of volume that we're seeing on this screen is traded at this line right here, which makes sense because this is where we had a lot of chop right in here, got rejected right here, and look, we're struggling to break free from it. So not only... We're not only watching the fact that we're breaking through the trend signal line because it's so, such conjunction with this point of control right here. We want to see this break out above this, find some support. So rise, sorry, rise, retrace, continuation is what we're looking for there. Now, we do have uh, stochastics, RSI, angle down, money flow. If we zoom out like this, we can see this money flow is kind of rounding suggesting maybe there's something going on here for a, a, a little bit of weakness coming in, but this dipped and is starting to come back up. We can tell with this momentum right here. So I think this is just trying to decide whether or not the narrative of the bulls is going to dominate or the narrative of the bears. Hmm. So let's get down to the 24 minute. If there's any clear signal here. Yeah. See, this isn't the worst thing in the world. Why do I say that? It's not, continuing all the way up well look it's fighting at this level all this consolidation right here and we need to rise maybe this retrace retrace retesting this previous resistance to support and then a continuation up but we have to remember i talked about this yesterday it's not always going to just break out of something uh you know break out up or break down down we talked about this yesterday we very well could get a chop zone in here back and forth between these two order blocks right here, the green and the red. Uh, we could just chop people out and then fake people out to the downside, come up, chop, and then continue to the upside. So we need to be patient. Let the chart on a daily basis decide, uh, uh, deliver the news about what the narrative is of that day and whatever time frame we're looking at of where that narrative is for bulls and bears. And you collect that data over time to see what the narrative is on the larger time frame. In this case, if we look at the three-day time frame, in this case, look at the three-day time frame. We've had a pretty strong bullish uptrend. We have an order block up here at fifty thousand dollars, forty-nine thousand, which is right in the middle of the golden pocket of the macro golden pocket. I do think we will touch somewhere up in the forty-seven to fifty thousand dollar range. The question is: Are is the narrative so strong that we're actually going to break the golden pocket this time on this cycle, or not? Before the having, I think there's more likelihood than not that we rise into it. The question is going to be what the pullback's going to be. If it's going to be something that comes all the way down here to this previous high, which we know is right here about $31,000, $32,000, or is it going to come down above that into the $36,000 level? We're going to have to let the narrative tell us what's going on. As it stands right now, we just know that we are in a very strong bullish structure. So what is it saying for these different altcoins that we've been talking about? We want to talk about on this specific stream. Let's talk about ordinals. Ordinals, rocket moonshot. Why? It's new coin. There's not a lot of data on this. So let's come over here. Let's get much smaller. Let's get down to the four hour and see what the narrative is here. So the money flow flipped bullish right here. How do I know that? Looking here at the BitLab trading stack, this is where the money flipped. Momentum's coming up. Stochastics front running this right here. So the stochastics were telling us there's strength coming into the market. RSI also coming up right here. And then the move started to be made. Following uh, the big move started when the money started pouring in. The momentum wave coming in. Look at all these green bars here showing a lot of buying pressure. And we can see this with the teal candles here as well. We got a bull flag rise, 
a little bit of a bull flag rise, bull flag rise. And by the way, for those of you out there that have not learned my TA, I call bull flags, bull pennants. Uh, I call them all. It's the same thing because they it's effectively react the same way with their with their continuation uh, targets. So I just call them all bull flags. So it's not forty different seven different things uh, that you call it. Now we have a bit of a double top here. This is a little concerning because on this rise up, this retrace on ordinals came down below this low. Interestingly, though, we didn't follow that with a lower low as well. Sorry, lower high as well. We did get a new high here, but then we got a bearish engulfing candle that said that was out of context and it came back down and it's working its way back down currently. So what we want to see if we want to remain short term bullish on this is we want to see we see we're testing this level right here on ordinals. We want to keep this level. Why? Because currently we have a higher low right here and maybe this is just not just a double top, maybe as this uh, structure uh, moves along, the price action is going to bounce up here, find some resistance, and we bit make a large bull pennant, which just for fun, I'm not gonna call this target as a legitimate target, but just for fun, if this were the case, this would, this would mean, and I don't think this is gonna happen, that's another 264, 250% gain from here if this bull pennant plays out and uh, makes a break for it. Uh, on that target structure. Now, this is a newer project, a lot less liquidity in this than, uh, you know, some of the top coins out there, but there's a lot of media and narrative around this. So I'm interested in to see what happens here if this holds here. And even if it loses, I'd be watching for a pullback uh, probably in this region here, 39, 39, 750. And if we lose that level, I'd be looking right here at this next leg down, which is 32, 32 bucks. Both of these, I think are great opportunities if the price does roll over and come down like this. Now, if we get back out to the 12 hour volume is falling off quite a bit, but look at this, the stochastics, stochastics. And the reason why the rest of the, the trading stack, uh, the, the trend fuel is not populated is because this is so new. It doesn't have enough data in there uh, to do it. But if we come over here, yeah, we can see the stochastics fully resetting. Uh, we looks like there's uh, some room to go down a little bit further if it wants to. But I'm letting this tell me what it's going to do. I don't need to jump in and just ride the bull without some sort of concerted effort about what's happening here. So getting back down, let's look at the one hour. So look at this. Pushed up. We've lost twice the trend signal line right here. Found resistance. Find resistance. Now we're trapped between this small time frame resistance and support. Not only do we have an order block above our head. Remember, order blocks are areas in the chart, price action, where a, a, a lot of uh, a grouping of a lot of orders at a certain price come in in large quantities. So it's showing a lot of liquidity interest at that price level. And they act as very good support and resistance levels based on people's actionable uh, uh, engagement with an exchange about price levels they're interested in buying or selling. So we have an order block directly above us, as well as this trend signal line, which is dark red, suggesting we are in a bearish trend right now. And we could tell because this is also going down. Um, so we want to watch right here. Currently, we have a little bit of a higher high right here. Higher low, I should say. I'm sorry. Uh, but if we lose this, the most small time frame uh, low that I'm looking for is if we break 46, 40, uh, 46, 46, 45, 46, 40, then I'm looking for this to test this level down here, which makes sense because we have this price interaction here right in the middle of this order block right here. And we're also testing these lows here. If we lose that, that's when we look down to the 39 and the 32. Now, if we do push up, watch this region here for if this just chops into a, uh, a basically a bull pennant, bull flag in here. Pay attention because we've got a couple different lines we can look at here uh, because we have a bit of a deviation. Remember, smaller market cap, so this can happen. Maybe this is already the bullpen here. I actually think this looks a little more, this looks a little bit more legitimate because we have one, two, three, four, four places that are uh, th this uh, price action is interacting with. This looks more legitimate here. So these are the areas I'm watching. If we break out from here, then we're going to want to watch for potential uh, bull traps, meaning if this comes up and rejects at this level, doesn't mean it's a bull trap yet, but on the retest down, if it loses that, then this was a trap. So be careful with what you're committing to. Make sure that you have an idea of what your time frame is and you set your stop losses. Now, let's look at uh, what was some of the other ones on that list. Uh, ordinals. 
So we're getting, I, I do think more likely than not, if the market continues moving, ordinals is setting up as an opportunity uh, on any dip that it has, I would be, I would be a buyer. Uh, ordinals, let's look at h and I don't really like h and but it's on the list. So let's look at it. Y'all hit the share and subscribe. Yes, Nicole, mini, uh, mini tater, minis tater, I guess. 155 people in the room, 84 likes. If you appreciate crypto, if you're invested in it, if you want to learn more, if you're just appreciating the community and what we're doing, not only here, but if you want to stick it to the mainstream media, hit the like button because you're letting YouTube know that you like crypto content and you're helping the entire crypto space by engaging with crypto content. So hit that like button and subscribe. Now, h and looking somewhat similar, different structure, but somewhat similar to what we just saw with ordinals, except this had an explosive pump up here. And look at this. Price action came down, tested this previous range right in here. We can draw a box. What's in the box? Right in here. Look, the candle highs, these candle wick rejections. Price action came down and cleared this sort of liquidity zone. Question is going to be here on h and Is this gearing up for another move to the upside? Touch, 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 all these touches. If we take out this level, this is a region that I'm looking at directly above it. We have the trend signal line right here, which is right about the 521. Uh, and so on the push up here, I'm expecting a probably a little bit of a struggle retest continuation if, we, if, if the bulls come in. We are seeing the momentum trying to round out. We see the stochastics angled up, the RSI angled to the upside. Uh, so I, this is possible. If we do get rejected here, it's not the end of the world. Let's watch for a double bottom in this region and then another try here. And that would also form a W pattern. W patterns are great for trading and identifying a reversal from the downside to the upside. Why? Because price action is pushing down. It tries with the bulls. The bears bring it back down, but the bulls defend that level. And then the rise up, the break of this level right here is uh, you're basically your signal that the reversal's trying to take place. Typically on this breakout, you'll also see a retest of this level and continuation up. So helium is not looking too bad for as much as I do not like the project. And I'm not calling, I'm not talking any trash about it. It's just my personal preference about the diligence I do, about what excites me about the market going forward. Um, if you're holding this, you're making money on it. I mean, I, I salute you. I appreciate you. All of us like different things, but I'll, I'll, I'll chart this out for you. Uh, so this is looking, see this candle structure, bullish engulfing candle impulse to the upside. Now we got a doji candle, which is this very thin body with wicks to the upside and downside suggesting strong bullish narrative neutral bear narrative. So it's essentially in a way this starts becoming a bearish narrative because the bulls tried, they can't do it anymore. Now it's like open seats for the bulls or the bears, which bull or bear is going to have more grit. The fact that we're here on an hour candle, we got 17 minutes left. We have another doji potentially forming into a spinning top. If we get a little bit of a body here, this is suggesting some weakness here, maybe a little bit of an attempt down, back down. We want to see what happens on that attempt back down. But what we're really watching for, because we're all bullish right now, we're watching for a break of this level. This level here at the basically 507, 508, but in this region, 507 up to 525, that's the region we want to watch for, for a potential push-up, a retest of the level, and then continuation. Let's be patient. Let's let the market do the work. Now, if this just pushes up and then takes this level and this level out right here, then I potentially would just be a buyer and jump in because this is, uh, you know, again, this kind of came back from the dead a little bit. Uh, if capital is just pushing this up, maybe this doesn't get the retest. Why do I say that? Because we see this uh, right here just to push up continuation. Push up. The retrace, was it, there wasn't really one. This is just another bull, bull pin it. Break out. See this? Right here. On the breakout, it happened. But what does it look like on the 15 minutes? Let's see if we got the retest. So, yeah, right, it just broke right out of it. And as soon as we cleared this box, look. Came back, retested, continuation, but very small continuation here. So I do think we can't put the cart before the horse. Things might just start ripping. Mm. Tig, are you leaving? Tig old biddies? Your, your name, every time I say it, it makes me laugh. I'm out. Uh, 
Hope everybody has a great weekend. Be healthy and wealthy. Yeah, shout out to Tiggle Biddies. Shout out to every member here in the stream that's here on a daily basis. Shout out to all the new people in the stream. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Every one of you that's here watching this kind of content or even another crypto show, you're helping build the crypto ecosystem. So special shout out to each and every one of you. If you want to see crypto go up, hit that like button because you are engaging with crypto content and we're able to bring it to more people. Now, let's go ahead and look at some of these other ones. I want to go to the winners list because um, we're kind of running a little short on time. Let's look at Tia real quick uh, because that dipped dip back. And that, we're going to look at Tia and Quant, and then we're going to look at some of the winners. Uh, we're going to do a little bit turbo technicals here. And how's uh, H bar? You see, look at this. Came down to this level. Is it forming a W here? I'm watching for a break of this level right here, if that happens. Now, this is a one-minute chart because I'm scalping. These are not long-term position trades unless the price moves enough that I can move my stop loss into profit, take 50% profit, and let the rest run. Then it'll turn into a, uh, you know, a swing position trade. But right now, I'm letting the chart tell me what it wants to do, and then we can potentially enter another trade on this. Or a break of this level, uh, I wouldn't really be shorting right now because I think things are getting exuberant. Things are getting exciting. So what are we looking at, Tia? How many of you out there jumped on the Celestia wagon? Because this came out of nowhere and just ripped and uh, took a lot of people by surprise. A uh, really good project here. I mean, look at this. Back here, I can't see anything with that there. Back here, November 2023. That's this year. This is this project. Boom. And this is looking a little toppy. I'm not going to lie. Because we got a, it's looking a little bit like a shoulder, maybe head. Maybe it forms a shoulder. Maybe it just breaks down. But I think the market is exuberant, so I'm going to lean a little bit more bullish. Even with the a pullback does not mean I'm, if I say something may pull back, does not mean I'm not bullish. This will be an opportunity. And it, if this comes down to this level, which is these previous highs, I absolutely would be a buyer here in this region because this project has got so many different players behind it. VCs, interest in the market. Uh, we're seeing a lot of volume come into this over the last uh, two months, uh, month and a half, I should say. Um, and so I'd be a buyer anywhere in this region if it does drop down. Now, if we do a Fibonacci, option F, if you're on PC, it's alt F. Look at this. We, we broke through the 382. And look at this previous high right at the golden pocket. So this gives me more confidence that if this comes down to this level, one, there may be some front runners buying it up. So I wouldn't buy at this exact level. I would sort of break this up, get a little bit of a position here at the 0.5, get another bit of, the, of a position here at the 0.618. But remember, I'm not doing it just based on what the chart says. If the narrative of the market switches and there's a lot of bearishness coming in, then I'll look at these buy orders as something I may want to change because maybe a further dip will come in. But we can't know that until that narrative presents itself. Right now with the current narrative in the market, on this pullback to this golden pocket area, I would be a buyer. And again, this is strategy advice this is not financial advice. I'm sharing my opinions on what I'm seeing in the market, what I would do for my portfolio. You all need to do your own diligence. Take trades based on your risk tolerance level, based on your strategy awareness, and make sure you manage and hedge your risk on all these things. Don't throw your, don't throw your life savings or a significant portion of your portfolio into a coin because you heard somebody on uh, YouTube talk about it. This is just bringing things to your attention so you can make decisions uh, that work best for you. So what we're looking at here, this is six hour. Let's get down to the one hour. Yeah, this is looking a little weak. I'm watching for, look at this. It's coming down right on this point of control, this teal line right here from the BitLab volume. We've got a bit of uh, this order block directly above us. I'm watching for the price action because we've got a little bit of a falling wedge here. I can just see it. I can just see it with my eyes. It's almost a falling channel, kind of a falling wedge. But if we can find support here, likely chop up into the zone, likely come back a little further. Uh, I think that this will probably come and test this 835 range, which is these lows right here. If we lose this, then I'm looking at coming down, as we mentioned, down into this 752 sort of region. Now, if this does push up, we're watching for a break of, look at this, the weekly VWAP right here, this yellow line, part of the BitLab trading stack, is coming right it's going to be coming right in line with re relatively where this upper uh, this upper level of resistance is here as it comes down and the tr uh, uh, trend signal line right here. So if the price action comes up into this region, what do I mean by this? If the price action comes up in here and rejects anywhere here, 
which is roughly about where these lows are. And about when that happens, the trend signal line and the, the weekly VWAP would be coming down into that region. If we reject here, I'm looking for a touch here, come down, and then uh, that move that we just talked about. If we're able to break through this and test this region up in here, then we look for the breakout retest on this uh, point of control line uh, roughly or this descending level of resistance. Now flip it to support and then make our ways to the upside. Could it go up? Could it go down? Yeah. You hate it when analysts say that. But the point here is you plan for all eventualities. So no matter what happens, you already had a mapped out sort of uh, strategy for what you're going to do with that market. Now, quant. Quant was ripping. Man, look at this. This is immediately, this is looking actually quite bullish. The pullback actually just gave us an opportunity to really paint out uh, the structure that's forming here. We can even bring this down to the candle bodies like this and come out like that. Boom. Order block right here. Formed order block. Rejection. Now we have a little bit of work to do in here. Let's see what's going to happen. The momentum wave is angled to the upside, which makes sense because we just had a pretty explosive move on the one hour chart here. If we can, if we push up, retrace continuation, I'm still watching right here for quant. 112, which is not only this previous range high, we got two levels here we're really watching. The 112, the 113.57, because this range high, this range high, and they're both well within the order block directly above us. It's almost as if it can act not only as a liquidity magnet, but also a block, a barrier to further upside if the bulls cannot commit to continuing higher. So we want to watch on a breakout here what happens in this price zone. Watch for a retrace if there can be a continuation with strength at this level. If this does reject and come back down here, we're watching for a break of 108.64. Uh, and we have an order block directly below us. So likely wick down, potentially trapping some people in this zone. We want to watch in this region on this wick down if this is able to break back into this and continue back up in this range or if this gets rejected and comes down First thing I would be watching, look at this, the weekly VWAP. Weekly VWAP, uh, as well as these previous lows, which are in line with these previous highs. So this range right here uh, for, you know, potentially an opportunity zone here in the 105 to 106. Remember yesterday we were talking about that 104 level? The data is evolving so we can adjust our levels a little bit. If we lose this level, then I'm looking for another opportunity back down here in the 102s, 103 sort of zone. Now. Let's get out of this. Let's look at uh, some of the winners. Is it profit taking time or not? Let's look at optimism. How many of you out there own optimism? Everybody hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell. Get involved with the community. I don't know what you're doing if you're not getting involved. Let's not be takers. Let's be givers and takers. Let's do this together. Now, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, forget to coin. I forget. Oh, optimism. OP, you down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Look at that move. That's a one-day chart. A one-day candle, I should say. 29% move. And look at where this came up to. I did not do this before the stream to, to prove a point. I did this. I made this line probably over a month or, month or two ago. And the price action went right to it. God, I got the hiccups. Shout out, Alexander G., Alexander G given five memberships. Big love to you. I appreciate you so much. By the way, anybody that doesn't know Alexander G, she is the absolute boss, number one mod in all of crypto. She does it for Discover Crypto, also for BitLab Academy, and she helps out so much in the back end. She actually does a lot of the time codes on the videos after they're out. So shout out to her, always being such a great supporter. Uh, CMG510, uh, Kelly, Kelly Kelly with the vocals. My voice is getting a little rough, I know. Mark Dutch, how you doing? Shout out to Mark Dutch. Is that Mark Dutch? Is that Mark Dutch from Traders Reality? Uh, one of the guys that's over there. If you are, shout out. Is that Mike Dutch? I think that's Mike Dutch. Sonny Boulian, Boulian, big love to you. Uh, Hemi, how you doing? J Crypto J, hands the Blue Ninja Pro. Big love to all of the new members here. We got 169 people in the house, and we have 2,755 likes. I'm just manifesting. Let's everybody hit that like button. Let's dive back in here. Optimism. This is one This is one of those ones I'm watching into the bull market. A lot of great partnerships also on uh, very tied in with uh, Coinbase as well. And look at this massive signal that the chart is telling you on the macro right here. Boom. W pattern. 
this is what's going on right here. Why did the market pump? I don't even need to look at the news. Actually, I have no idea if there was any news that came out about optimism. I haven't had time to look. But what I do know is we have a giant double bottom pattern right here with the W formation, which, by the way, at BitLabAcademy.com, yeah, I got to tell you about it. This is how we pay the light bills over here. The number one way you can support this channel and support other people and yourself knowing how to navigate this space, come become a member at BitLab Academy in the course area. And not only it's not only courses, we have the huge premium Discord, but coming right down here to candles and candle patterns, we break down how to spot these reversals and how to plan targets from them. And then you can hop over here into the Discord and sh have different trade setups that our, our pro traders, myself, John Dalton, uh, Tim, uh, Joshua Jake, DZ, uh, TJ, uh, all kind of people, as well as many, many, a couple thousand other people in here sharing ideas, th thoughts, uh, scalps, trades, what's going on in all this. Uh, there's calls and different things you should be looking at, and members chat and uh, stocks. There's so much in here. That's all part of the BitLab membership. But point here. We break all these things down with candles and candle patterns. So when we look at this chart, we could say immediately as I looked at it, it's like, that's a giant W pattern, reversal formation. So what do we do? We come over here, we draw option J, draw a neckline right there. You, if you don't want the horizontal ray, you can do option T or alt T if you're on PC. Anytime I say option, it's because I'm on Mac. It's alt if you're on PC. Look at that neckline right there. W formation, rejection, rejection, the break, the push up into this, the break of this is a signal that this was clearly a W pattern. And so what we want to watch here came up to this previous range consolidation choppiness right here. We want to watch for a potential pullback and retest of the zone down here in the $1.89, $1.90 sort of region. Unless this breaks through, then we'll watch for a retrace uh, of a different amount. For instance, option F, we come up here to this level. Say the price action continues up. We want to watch, man, the golden pockets all the way down here. That's pretty impressive. I would be watching for a retrace like to the 382 uh, in this case, if that were to happen. But this is on the daily. What's it looking like on the four hour? Ooh, look at that. See? The narrative came in. Boom. It bought. What does it look like on the 24 minutes? Yeah. So there was just a, a boom that just volume came in and it, boom, it was bought. But this is looking like if this level's lost, I'm looking here at the 24 minute. Zooming out here. This is looking more of like a bearish structure here than uh, like a flag uh, because of this rise retrace, rise retrace, right? It's almost like a, it's almost like a very ugly head and shoulders. If this is the case, we draw from the top here to the neckline, we measure this down and this suggests that we come down in here. That looks like it's right about where the golden pocket is. Come up in here. Look at that golden pocket right in this region. So if we do lose this level and come down, I'll be watching for this region as a potential buy opportunity. That was right what I said before with the other analysis I did. Dollar ninety sort of region. Dollar ninety, dollar ninety, yeah, dollar ninety two. So I'd be looking in this for opportunity. I'm I'm bullish on uh, optimism going into the bull run. If this is invalidated as a head and shoulders, meaning the price action does not lose this level and we push up, if we take out this level right here which is roughly the, I have too many lines there. Right where this level is, look at this. The 215, and we start pushing up, then I think that this will likely retest to 225. And if we take that out, we're continuing to the upside. But let's zoom back over here. Let's look at Bitcoin. How's it doing? How's it flowing? Uh, I mean, it is riding here, four hour, fighting support on the trend signal line, fighting support right here on the 20 moving average in the EMA ribbon, the dynamic support zone that we have shaded right here. Finding support, losing the 20 moving average, starting to signal, telegraph something a little different, loses the trend signal line, and it's having some struggle in here. Watching, remember, remember, let's get out of this chart. Let's go to this chart right here, I believe it is. Remember, we've got some key things that we need to be watching for. Where are my all my lines? Am I on a different chart? Oh, I'm on a different window. That's why. It's getting so confused there. I hope I didn't erase all my, all my lines. Oh, I'm on the alt with. That's why. God dang it. I was like, man, I had all these lines drawn, and they disappeared. So coming back over here, market cipher. This is a one-minute chart. Get the hell out of here. Okay. 
So, Marcus Cypher's got Green Wave here. We have a 12 on the DBSI. This is on the eight hour, suggesting there is pressure underneath, suggesting this may try and move back up. But if we get down and look at like the four hour, for instance, uh, we can see that this also shows that same case, but we're finding some struggle coming in through this, this, this range highs, this trend line that's coming in through here. We're struggling basically keeping up just above the, uh, the 20 moving average, which is this line in the middle of the Bollinger Bands. If we come over here to the Lux Algo, we can see on Lux Algo that uh, sell signal came in and it's just had the purple, which doesn't mean it means it's not quite a very strong sell signal, but there's not a lot of bullishness underneath this. If we do lose this, we have, look at this, my TA that came in through here, all this price action right here. And we also have this sort of support uh, zone right here on the Lux Algo right at this level. If we lose this level, then I'm looking down here to the 38 sort of region on the BitLab Academy, BitLab uh, trading stack. We came up into the order block, got rejected. And this is on the four hour, we lost a trend signal line. We're coming right up to this level, finding resistance. I'm watching right here, previous high of this range with these wicks, right in line with where the weekly VWAP is 42, 41, again, down here into uh, 40s, really. Um, but this region right here is where the, uh, the, order, uh, the order gap is from CME futures. So I'm still watching for a potential opportunity to pick some coins up. If it comes down in here, we can tell by what, the narrative is with the why it comes down there for what and the price structure in the chart, whether or not we want to be a buyer at those levels. But that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm feeling. Ethereum also making similar sort of structural plays, pushing up, rise, continuation, rise, you know, retrace, continuation, retrace, continuation, a bit more of an impulse. But the problem here on the four hour is that we have a bit of a broadening wedge here. So I'm watching for if this does start coming down, losing this 2321, coming down, testing in this region, this order block below us, 2263. If we lose this, <coughs> I'm looking for the price action likely to come back to this high here, uh, which is 2135, which also, if you notice on the BitLab trading stack, this yellow line, this blocked out yellow line here, it's at last place there was high volume sort of interaction at a level that flipped from buying volume to stopping volume it also gives you a good idea of where a potential area look at this resistance coming into this also can be support as you project this out when the price comes back if it if it were to come back down so this is what i'm seeing in the charts this is what i'm feeling how you all doing before i go let's dive into the chat how many people of you out here how many of you are new to the channel if you are new to the channel by the way welcome to the show we're here on a daily basis we've got great content in the academy, breaking down courses, courses into lessons between five minutes, 12 minutes, each specific thing, whether it's how to do a buy, how to do a sell, Fibonacci's, uh, patterns, what is a head and shoulders, what's an inverted head and shoulders, what's a broadening wedge, what's support and resistance, how do you break down charts in, tech, in, uh, in trading view, each different indicator, RSI, get in the academy, get in the discord, we got a great community there, and then of course we do so much content here on YouTube. And as you could tell in the chat window, we have got a huge number of people in here that are just all positive. This is a positive channel with encouragement. We don't do the trolls. We don't. This is all about building together. This is what we do. This market. For those of you, what is your born on date? Before we go, what is your born on date? I don't mean what day were you born. What is the day? or the month, I should say, the month and year, you made your first purchase, no matter how small it was or what was it. Some people come in through Bitcoin. Some people come in through Doge or Shiba Inu. I don't hate on anybody. Whatever your inroad was in this market, congratulations on being here. Congratulations on being ahead of the curve. If I could leave you with anything here, uh, I'm pulling up a chart real quick. If I could leave you with anything here, regardless of if you feel like you're, you got in too late or you're getting left behind or oh, so many people are in a better position than you are. Screw all that nonsense. Let it go. Let me say that again. If I could leave you with anything here, if you are even aware of crypto, you are ahead of the game. If you bought any, you are miles ahead of everybody in the world. There's a small percentage of people in the world that are involved with crypto at this point. So if you even are aware of it, especially if you're watching content like this from BitLab Academy or Discover Crypto or anywhere, you are so far ahead. In fact, 
not only are you ahead, regardless, whether you have $1, no dollars, or $10, remember this right here. This chart shows, remember this right here. This chart shows you, this is where we're at in the number of people in the world. This is the S curve of adoption. <laughs> Can you see how fast this is growing? You are so far ahead of the pack and the flood of capital that's going to be coming into this market. So I just want to encourage you to stay positive, tune up your strategy, make sure you can dominate this market and you can do it with us here at BitLab Academy or anywhere else. I just want you to succeed. Big love to each and every one of you. I'll see you in the next episode. And uh, thank you for being here. That's all I got. We'll see you. I'll do a weekend stream this week as well, but I'll see you, most of you on Monday at 11.45 a.m. Eastern time here for the BitLab Academy daily stream. That's all I got. I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend. Adios. Everybody, before I go, drop those muchacho emojis because we're about to adios muchachos. For those of you that are new, I'm an idiot. I'm fun. I'm silly. I don't take life too serious. I sang an adios muchacho song on my first episode, uh, and people were like, we need the audio song. So every episode, we do it. So drop those muchachos. Let's get it going. Let's stay positive. Let's get in these trades. Shout out to Blowfin. If you haven't signed up yet, sign up for the Blowfin uh, trading uh, exchange down below. Trade with us. We're going to be doing some great giveaways. Sign up through that link. You're going to be participating in all that. I love you all. I appreciate you. That's all I got. Uh, adios. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always tuning in. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being Crypto's friend. Hit that like button, sucker. Check out bitlabacademy.com.